In today's video, I will be covering one of the most iconic American brands existing today. I'm talking about McDonald's. What intrigued me to do this video is the future growth analysis that they are predicting for 2021 and 2022. So I will be talking about that and I will do an in-depth analysis of their business model, products, customers, competitors, financials, dividends, future and their valuation. I suggest you watch until the end because this is probably the most in-depth video I have done so far. And I'm warning you, there's a lot more than meets the eye with McDonald's. Hi, this is Tom from the Dividend Attitude. We are nearing the 400 subscribers mark now, so the community is steadily growing. Again, thanks for all the support. Let's dive in. A lot of you might have seen the movie The Founder, which is about the history of McDonald's and how it came to be a franchise business. Because that is what it is. A lot more on that later, because this is a very important detail. If you haven't watched The Founder, I highly suggest it, available on Netflix. The story of McDonald's started with the brothers Dick and Mac McDonald, and one of their first important decisions was to streamline their business in 1948, by introducing the speedy service system, producing 15 cent hamburgers in their restaurant in San Bernardino, and featuring a limited menu. The success of this first restaurant led the brothers to begin franchising their concept and they opened up 8 more restaurants. Then in 1954, Ray Kroc, a milkshake mixing machine salesman, visited their restaurant and became their first franchise agent. Eventually Kroc acquired the rights to the McDonald's company in 1961 for 2.7 million. Under his wing, the franchise model was perfected. The McDonald's corporation owns the land and leases it out to tenants which have to pay rent and later on also a part of their sales as royalties to McDonald's. Ray Kroc had a big vision of opening as many as 1000 restaurants across the US, but the company kept growing bigger and bigger and also began expanding internationally. One fun fact, the big McDonald's yellow and red McDonald's sign was first designed as two big arches to attract attention to get customers to come to their restaurant. What is that? The golden arches. It's a way to make the place stand. Out, huh? Today, McDonald's has over 38,000 restaurants in more than 100 countries. Let me show you first the market cap and how McDonald's has performed in recent and not so recent years based on price before we dive into the financials and further dive into what McDonald's is all about. At the time of recording, McDonald's has a market cap of 171 billion, which is considered mega cap. That puts them in the same ballpark as Cisco, which I analyzed in episode 32, now suggested in the top right. McDonald's has a low beta of 0.67, which means it is a lot less volatile than the overall market. Year to date the price performance of McDonald's is 16% and in the last 5 years they went up by almost 119%. Longer term, in the last 20 years, McDonald's has almost doubled the S&P 500, with a total annual return of 11.1%. Of course, as investors we don't get paid for past performance, so in the last part of the video we will also look ahead into future predictions. And then my favorite part. The dividends. The current yield of McDonald's stands at 2.27% at the time of recording, which is a bit below their 5 year average of 2.55%. McDonald's is well on its way to becoming a dividend king with 45 years of dividend increases under their belt. To put this in perspective, during this time there were many economic meltdowns, such as Black Monday 1987, the dot com bubble, the financial crisis of 2007-2009 and now the current health crisis. The dividend growth of McDonald's is quite stable between mid 6% and 9% growth rates whereby the 10 year growth rate is at 8.7% and the 1 year growth rate at 6.5%. The earnings payout ratio looks high at 86.7% and is actually above my threshold of 70%. But just like with REITs, McDonald's has a lot of depreciation and amortization bringing the net income down. So it is better for us to look at the free cash flow payout ratio which is also a bit on the high side with approximately 70%. But again, it is important to remember that the cash flow is quite stable and is mostly growing. The dividend safety score stands at 77 and was reaffirmed during the current crisis. If you liked the video so far, don't forget to hit that like button and make it turn blue. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on future content. I will be making a lot more of these in-depth videos in the future. Looking at the reported revenue of McDonald's, one might think, this does not look good. But for McDonald's, we need to dig in deeper to understand why. McDonald's has roughly two types of locations. Company operated and franchise operated locations. Revenue of the company operated locations is 100% recorded in the books. While they only receive rent, initial fee income and royalties, a percentage of the revenue of the franchisee from the franchise operated locations. So naturally, as a percentage, they can record less revenue from franchise operated locations. And this is part of the key to analyzing the revenue of McDonald's because they have deliberately been shifting towards more franchise operated locations versus company owned locations. And their goal is to have 95% of their locations franchise operated. 
This is clearly visible in their revenue breakdown. Revenue from company operated locations is going down, but revenue from franchise locations is going up. Why? I will show you that in a minute when looking at the margins. A more meaningful metric to look at is to look at system wide revenue, which includes all revenue generated by company and franchise operated locations. And system wide revenues have been growing as you can see in this graph. Now let's talk about margins. The margins have continually been improving, usually this is a sign of cost cutting that is not sustainable, but with McDonald's it is a sign of a changing business model, where they lean more towards franchise operated locations. Again, the goal is 95%. The margins of their franchise operated locations are naturally so much higher than the margins from the company operated locations as we can see in this table. Because all the operating costs for franchised locations are the responsibility of the franchisee. Overall gross margin was 52.7% in 2019, which is the highest in 10 years. The same applies to the operating margin, which is at 42.2% and is also the highest in 10 years. Compared to competitors, they have the highest operating margin by far. So yes, revenues have been going down since 2013, but margins have been going up. What does this mean for the net income? Of course, it has been going up in recent years, as you can see here. Net income went from 4.9 billion to 6 billion in 2019 for an average growth rate of 2.4%. Net income growth has been much stronger in recent years. Because McDonald's acts as a landlord in a lot of their locations, the franchisees are also responsible for reinvesting capital in their business over time. This obviously brings the total capital expenditures for McDonald's down. And because more locations are franchised over time, the free cash flow also becomes more predictable because the cash flow from operations includes rent and royalty payments from the franchisee to McDonald's. So part of the income is independent of the profits the franchised restaurants generate. The free cash flow went from 3.9 in 2010 to about 6.8 in 2019 for a growth rate of 4.8% annually. There is no debt to equity ratio available since 2015 where it was at 3.4. The reason behind that is that the liabilities of McDonald's are greater than the assets on the balance sheet, resulting in negative shareholders equity. In theory this is a bad sign because there is a negative book value shareholders equity, meaning that if the company would be liquidated, in theory there would be debt left. But the kicker is that most of the assets of McDonald's are the land and restaurants they own. A big portion of those are acquired a long time ago and they are recorded in the books with their cost basis, which is likely way off from the actual market value. And again, depreciation plays a big role here. Looking at the net debt to EBITDA, a proxy for cash flow, it would take McDonald's a bit more than 4 years to pay off all its debt, which would be high if McDonald's was in the restaurant business, but they are more of a real estate business and compared to realty income and store capital, two reads I analyzed in episode 33, it is considered low. The current ratio is a bit worrisome at 0.98 and it is down trending the last few years, so that would be something to keep an eye on. The same applies to the quick ratio which is the same as the current ratio but only the most liquid assets are compared to the current liabilities. This is also below 1 at 0.86. The equity is negative so there is no return on equity to take a look at. The return on invested capital measures the return on both equity and debt. Since the equity is negative only the debt portion can be measured and that stands at 22% according to Simply Safe Dividends. As a company that needs debt to acquire more locations the credit rating is important. The S&P credit rating stands at triple B+, which is still investment grade. There is a famous story about Ray Kroc giving some advice to MBA students at Harvard, where he asked what business is McDonald's in. After students had given some answers, Ray Kroc allegedly said, I'm not in the hamburger business, I'm in the real estate business. It's owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. You're not in the burger business, you're in the real estate business. McDonald's only operates a very small portion of their restaurants and about 80% worldwide is franchised and operated by those franchisees. Franchisees bring the spirit of entrepreneurship and commitment to communities. Suppliers are dedicated to the highest levels of quality and safety. The company facilitates learning and sharing across McDonald's more than 38,000 restaurants. Unless you have lived under a rock your entire life, you know what products McDonald's offers. But did you also know that there are slight differences in the menu depending on which part of the world you visit the McDonald's at? In Asian countries they also serve rice instead of fries. They serve a mashed potato burger in China, fries covered in gravy in Canada and so on. But they have also gotten a lot of critique on their menus not being healthy enough over the years, which led them to introduce healthier options into their menus over time. Nowadays they are able to quickly spot food trends, which products are doing well in which places and which ones are not through all the data they collect. This allows for customized and localized marketing based on customer preferences and even the local weather. This all started when McDonald's acquired Dynamic Yield in 2019, which is a decision logic company. 
McDonald's operates and reports through the following three segments. US, the company's largest market. The segment is 95% franchised as of December 31, 2019. International operated markets, comprised of markets or countries in which the company operates and franchises restaurants, including Australia, Canada, France, Spain and the UK. International development licensed markets and corporate, comprised primarily of developmental, licensee and affiliate markets. McDonald's operates in 118 countries and they serve more than 69 million people each day. They sell about 590 hamburgers per second and they serve about 6100 customers per second. Obviously, McDonald's faces competition on different levels, from local food stores to the bigger restaurant chains. They compete directly with restaurant chains like Yum Brands, which include KFC, Taco Bell and Pizza Hut, Wendy's, Domino's Pizza, Burger King, which is listed on exchanges Restaurant Brands International, and many more. McDonald's is a company that enjoys a wide moat, in brand recognition as one of the most iconic and well-known brands around the world, and an economies of scale mode with a uniform approach and menu across all restaurants, they are able to offer food at affordable prices with wide margins. And then management quality. Management is a sensitive topic for McDonald's since the former CEO Steve Easterbrook was fired last year for having a relationship with a subordinate, which is against company policy. But let's look beyond that. In this episode I will pick out a few qualities to illustrate the quality of McDonald's management. If you want to know which other criteria there are to judge management quality, be sure to check out episode 9, now suggested. First I like to look at length of tenure. Obviously the current CEO, Chris Kamsinski, has only been CEO since 2019, but he joined McDonald's in 2015 and was previously the president of the US operations. On the website of McDonald's the length of tenure is not disclosed for all execs, but there are quite a few with 20 years or more of experience working at McDonald's. One important executive for the future of McDonald's is Lucy Brady, which is the chief digital customer engagement officer. She was the leading force behind the rapid expansion of Mac Delivery and led the recent acquisition of Dynamic Yield, which is very important for the future of tracking customer preferences. Capital allocation and maintaining a healthy balance sheet is also a key aspect to determine management quality. There's no denying that debt went up quite a bit in recent years, but at the same time that debt has been used for the expansion of their number of locations. Nevertheless, this is definitely something to look into further. Just like the previous company I analyzed, Cisco, McDonald's is a company in transformation doubling down on their franchise business model and becoming more of a tech-oriented company with the acquisition of Dynamic Yield. If you judge the management based on the transformation, they are doing very well with expanding margins due to the transition of more franchised restaurants. Both based on earnings and operating cash flow, McDonald's is grossly overvalued according to Fastgraphs. Based on estimated 2021 earnings, it would return a negative 37% annually and based on cash flow, it would return almost minus 22% based on 2021 cash flow predictions. Finbox has McDonald's at a fair value of 190, which would be a downside of 17% compared to the current price. According to the dividend yield theory, which I cover in detail in episode 12, now suggested in the top right, McDonald's is quite overvalued at the current price of 229. Fair value is at $196 and undervalued territory is at $149, so a big difference there. Analysts on fast graphs are predicting a 39% increase in earnings per share to 8.24 in 2021. Of course, mainly due to the current crisis this year's earnings per share are quite low. For 2022 they are expecting a 10% increase year on year to 9.11 earnings per share. McDonald's has either matched or beat analysts expectations in most of the recent years, except for 2014. So analysts are quite on the money when it comes to forecasting for McDonald's. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, I was at least very surprised by these forecasts. I have recently started using Trading212 as one of my brokers. What I like is that Trading212 is one of the few brokers offering commission-free trading to EU citizens. They offer fractional shares and they have recently introduced the auto invest feature where you can make your own buys, similar to the US M1 broker. When you sign up through the referral link below in the description, we will both receive a free share worth up to 100 euro, pound or dollar. If you do sign up through my link, let me know which free share you get so we can share the fun. If you have come this far into the video, you must have liked the content I provided. I will make more of these in-depth analysis videos in the future. So consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when a new video comes out. Until next time, bye bye.